Let's get into what's really in the North Pole and the legend of the Anunnaki, which will make it all come together for you. You definitely can't trust NASA, who admittedly computerized and used composite images to create world maps, globes, and Earth satellite visuals. A lot of times, the North Pole on satellite maps is covered in nothing but clouds, sort of like a massive ice hurricane is going on up there, so you can't see anything. For those who want to be contrary and say there's no solid evidence anything is up there, well, I can be ignorant and say there's also no solid evidence that there's not anything up there, except there is. According to ancient legends and maps, there is a land in the North Pole that serves as the place where God or gods reside and also serves as a portal to the gods or the heavens located at the center of the world. In Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, and other related spiritualities and religions, it is called Mount Maru or Subaru, which is actually placed here on this old map. The Greeks call it Mount Olympus. They never say Mount Olympus was in Greece. That is only widely assumed. In my Fight in the Garden of Eden video, I explain in depth that Eden is the North Pole and the Garden of Eden is in the region of the lost slash sunken continent of Mu in the Pacific Ocean that nears and or includes portions of the Philippines. In the Secrets of Enoch found in the Forgotten Books of Eden, after Enoch leaves the Tree of Life, the angels take him to another place in the north, still in the third heaven. And it says in chapter 10 verse 1, And those two men, angels, led me up onto the northern side and showed me there a very terrible place, and they were all manner of tortures in that place, cruel darkness and unillumined gloom and there is no light there but murky fire constantly flamethrower aloft and there is a fiery river coming forth and that whole place is everywhere fire and everywhere there is frost and ice thirst and shivering while the bonds are very cruel and the angels fearful and merciless bearing angry weapons merciless torture so this is why all these different beliefs idolize the place in the North Pole where the gods were but given the earliest creation stories and Enoch it's kind of like yes these are all powerful deities are there but it's also a place of torture. So there's a duality to the nature of what may possibly be in the North Pole. According to legend, Mount Maru is very beautiful and decorated with assorted gems, crystals, and precious metals. It is the mountain that the very sun, moon, and stars revolve around. There are a few other holy or sacred mountains in the world that are considered portals and have corresponding restrictions placed on them because of so. But Mount Maru is placed far above all these mountains. In religion, we hear of people going to the mountaintops to speak with God or disappearing on mountaintops after going up to the mountaintops to speak with God. The concept of mountaintops being portals or where deities reside is nothing new. Mount Maru may be beautiful and all that but everything is dual nature and I do believe as above so below. So yes Mount Maru equates to Eden but it also equates to hell and is the neighbor of the world. It is the astronomical term axis mundi which is Latin for axis of earth between celestial poles where heaven and earth connect where the world mountain lies. They're at the center of the world. Well, well, listen up. From Anu comes the term Anunnaki and Ankh. Some legends also tell of him having a concert named Ki, which is also the origins of the before mentioned words. Anu was the father of all deities, the god of all gods, the sky father, the heavenly father. Anu's domain was the heavens. He had two main sons, Enlil and Enki. The three of them represent the first god body triad. Both sons are reptilian archetypes and mankind compared them both to the likes of serpents and labeled them as such. Despite them being shapeshifters, their real form was reptilian. Enlil being the eldest was the chief of all other deities and was the god of wind and air and weather and he possessed the most power. For this he was called the great administrator which in Sumerian means Satam from which the word Satan derives. Enlil was called the chief god and the farmer god as he invented the matok, a Sumerian tool for digging that he gave to mankind to build cities and tend to the land. Enlil was believed to aid in the growth of plants. Enlil's domain was land on earth and he was in charge of all the lesser gods on it and Enlil was actually the deity that brought forth the great flood or the last ice age. Now despite that title, Enki is the brother in history often given the bad rep but Enki always intervened on behalf of mankind but because Enlil was the higher deity and he and Anu were always on one accord it seems, it was smarter for mankind to stay on the good side of Enlil. Enki was the god of civilization, wisdom, fresh water, crafts, magic, exorcism, healing, virility, fertility, art, trickery, mischief, and creation. He was known by other gods as the far-sighted one. He was a god who was sometimes depicted as a man covered with the skin of a fish similar to a merman whose domain was the underworld and the abyss which is the deep water 
waters or the waters beneath the ground. Contrary to the lies they tell us in grade school, lava and those other layers are not beneath Earth's surface. Not how they depict it anyways, but water is. They found this out after digging 7 miles into the Earth's surface. And also even Genesis says the Earth used to be water from underground until the flood came and now we have a rain and a whole water cycle that's different. And the hollow Earth map also displays this evidence. The flood actually occurred by the waters being stripped from the planet Mars and thrashed at Earth. So now we have the water cycle to balance out how much loose water is on the planet at any given time because this extra water is too much water for our planet when comparing it to how there was less water before and more land prior to the flood. And now the Earth is 71% water. Scientists actually say that Mars once looked like Earth. While ancient legends around the world talk of how Mars was stripped of her atmosphere and waters and it was thrusted at Earth by the Great Serpent who was most likely in Lil. But in Sumerian texts, Enki was actually a master geneticist creating humans to be however Enlil saw fit. That is, until he didn't and created them to be independent of Enlil because Enlil only cared for mankind in a master servant type of way and our only purpose to him was servitude, enslavement of the sort. Enlil had us originally created to be sort of like zombies to be honest. Now in the Apocryphon of John, it actually tells the names of the angels slash extraterrestrials that Enki assigned to each and every part of the body. These are the technicians responsible for the functionalities and engineering of all of our body parts. What's funny about the Garden of Eden story is that it was originally called the Paradise of Eden. Paradise didn't mean garden until the Hellenistic period which was 300 plus years before Christ. It originally and in Sumerian meant an enclosure for animals. The name Adam actually originally meant animal. Not saying he was an animal as we see them today but in the sense that mankind's original purpose was to be servants in the same way every animal has a niche or a role in their environment that is vital to sustaining that environment. The gods created animals to contribute to sustaining the earth just like mankind's sole purpose for creation and niche was to tend to the earth so that the gods did not have to. The story goes that Junior Dengers or Ijiji were lesser gods in the sense of Enlo and his sister Nenlo and Enlo assigned the Ijiji the job of doing farm labor as well as the task of cultivating the earth, maintaining the rivers and canals. But after 40 years of doing this, these lesser divines rebelled, refusing to continue labor. Enlo was not having it and was ready to punish them all and possibly kill them all. This revolt of the Ajiji, however, was not led by one of their own, but of another Anunnaki god named Geshtu'i, who was most likely just supervising and managing the Ajiji as they tended to the earth. Enlo calls on his father Anu and states his case, and then the Ajiji state their case, but Enlil being unreasonable basically tells Anu he'll go back to the heavens with him and the rest of the Anunnaki and states the whole matter could be resolved by making an example out of one of the Ajiji by killing them. To which Anu objects asking can you blame them? Their work was extremely difficult and every day we could hear their cries of pain as they labored and we chose to ignore them. In all fairness they have every right to complain to their ruler Enlil and approach his house. This is where Enki interjects stating he agrees with their father Anu and proposed the idea of creating mankind to do the work instead. Then Lo, who is sometimes called Ninki and Mommy in varying texts, is also Enki's half-sister and the mother of all the gods. She is key. Then Lo says she will assist Enki but creation is outside her jurisdiction. Basically Enki just needs her womb as she is also the head of all womb goddesses. She is Mother Earth. Enki alongside Ninlo create mankind by killing Gesh to e who basically sacrificed himself for the cause. The tablets also note that the spirit of Gesh to e shall also enter mankind as to not be forgotten. So here we see that some things are very spiritual and some things are scientific. Yet they do coincide as his DNA is used to help create mankind. But Gesh to e's spirit represents the part of mankind that is immortal even after a physical death. In Babylonian legend, Gesh to e's name is Kingu, the child of Abzu and Tiamat, who are two water deities with water domain. It makes sense that our origins would be water deities as mankind is 70% water and water is essential to us sustaining our lives. Now Geshtu E's flesh and blood would then be mixed with clay and after Geshtu E's spirit entered the vessel, its heart beat and it was deemed alive by Ninlil. A number of great Ajiji gods would spit on him and each of their genetic identities from the saliva was then combined with the essence of mankind, thus creating genetic variation for future humans. 
Ten months later, the first man was birthed. The first man was named Adapa or Abgalu, which breaks down into Ab, which means water, Gal, which means great, and Lu, which means man. Great man of water. Adapa and Enki would go on to be very close until the end of his days, and Enki would ensure all mankind was of one language to make things very easy for them to work together. But Adapa would become infamous for unknowingly refusing to give up immortality. And you could probably assume right here that Adam and Adapa are parallel. As I said earlier, initially humans were unable to reproduce on their own as they were created for servitude and reproduction done on their own would slow that down. Originally mankind was literal zombies, made not to think for themselves and just mindlessly follow in Lil's instructions and work. Enki did not like this notion and felt mankind was capable of being so much more. Enki went against Enlil and Anu's wishes and modified mankind so that they could become fully functional, able to reproduce and in independent thinkers because Enki felt that humans deserve to be more than just servants and he didn't like the way his creations were being used and treated. This is where the conflict between these two gods began. For more discussions of conspiracy theories or odd and unusual things that happen on this planet or in outer space or anywhere, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will not let you down. Also, what are some conspiracy theories you would like for me to talk about? Because I've heard a lot, but obviously I haven't heard them all. Please comment down below and let me know.